I'm Midge Shoemaker and this is week 12 of my doing 100 weeks of YouTube videos and focusing on creating a healthier and happier lifestyle for myself. So um, this week I have been struggling to redefine healthier and happier for myself because I am on week 12 and I don't feel like I'm making a whole lot of progress and things are not going quite the way that I want them to. Not that things ever go the way that I want them to. <laughs> I am just sure that God is teaching me different lessons and one of them is just trying to love myself and accept myself for where I'm at because in doing that it just makes me happier and then I make healthier choices because I am happier. Um, this week I can't say I made the healthiest choices. Um, it's been another rough week and I'm really struggling with having a whole bunch of rough weeks, multiple in a row. And I'm like, when is this going to just stop and life is going to get easy? I don't think it ever is. I just have to learn how to work around what's going on in my life. Um, but I did watch some of General Conference on Saturday. I love General Conference, but I don't always watch it. And sometimes when I'm overwhelmed and stressed and super emotional, I conference helps me to it, I find it to be very peaceful, but I also find that having that much spiritual um, contact all at the same time, I don't know if contact is the right word, but um, being around all of that spiritual uplifting things is very good, but it can also be very exhausting. Um, I, I'm i thinking there's a, a story of Joseph Smith when he um, came out of the temple and had some kind of... Uh, revelation and he was with someone else and they walked out and the other person kind of collapsed <laughs> and then Joseph Smith said it it takes a while to get used to it um it takes a while to build up those spiritual muscles to to handle this the revelation and all of the things that come from the spirit and at one point in my life I was I think I was spiritually stronger and I could handle things better and somehow the older I get it gets harder to do that or maybe it's just because I went so long without doing it that it's hard to do it or maybe because I'm trying to soak it all in and make it mean something very deep instead of just being on the surface. I want to internalize all of it and it's a lot to internalize. So um, I probably just have too high of demands on myself. But there was this talk at conference and one thing I have learned from conference is that sometimes we get our own personal revelation and we interpret things that are said completely differently. So I decided to look this up so I could reference it in the link, you know, below for anybody else that wants to read the talk and all of the information. And I'm trying to read through the talk and find the quote that I remember that just like made me feel so much better. I couldn't find it. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm, what am I retarded? So I slowed down and I read through the talk again instead of just trying to skim it. It was a really good talk. I do not know how to pronounce this guy's name. I think he was a member of the 70. It was from Saturday afternoon session. Um, October 2021 Saturday afternoon session I'm going to read that I wrote down his name it, I think it's pronounced Eric but it's spelled E-R-I-C-H and I have no idea how to say the last name it's like Kopischke I, I don't know K-O-P-I-S-C-H-K-E anyway he gave this amazing talk I don't remember what it was titled but it had something to do with mental illnesses and he talked about um, different mental illnesses like uh, bipolar, PTSD, ADHD, anxiety, um, and other orders, and people having some or all of those or combination of those. And um, it was a really amazing talk. It was a talk about how people try to avoid that because of it messes with our idea of perfection. And so people, <laughs> people don't know what, how to deal with it, so they just avoid it. It's um, an invisible um, element that people can't always see but it's very real and very challenging. And I just really appreciate it that it's very real. And that is something, sorry, that I deal with that's very real. But sometimes I forget that I have that or I get frustrated with it because it makes doing simple everyday tasks very difficult sometimes. Just the process of getting out of bed can be very difficult. Um, motivating myself to do things that make perfect sense in my brain. I should totally be able to do this. And my body's just like, yeah, you're hilarious. We ain't moving. We ain't doing this. And I was just like, ah, and I get very frustrated with myself and it makes me not like myself very much because I have all of these wonderful, amazing goals. I have these gifts, these talents. And I'm just like, 
Why do I keep not fulfilling my potential? Why do I keep not accomplishing what I want to accomplish? And um, today I, I read my scriptures and meditationals and I was praying to see myself the way that God sees me or to know what he would have me to know today. And today was just a reminder that my problems are not invisible. My problems may be invisible, but they're very real. They are very real. It is a very real struggle that I deal with, but also that I need to share this because I am not the only person that struggles with this. And the more I put it out there, the more it may help other people not feel so alone, know that they're not the only person that's struggling, know that they're not the only person that's having a hard week or a hard month or a hard year or whatever the case may be. Um, so, and I know that that's true because um, I have family that struggle with depression and I have a brother that's been diagnosed with bipolar uh, disorder and um, my older sister and my younger sister have depression that they take medication for um, and my older sister has ADHD. I don't know if I have ADHD but <laughs> I also know my younger younger of my two brothers not the one that's bipolar but the other one has ADHD. So <laughs> that's you know Mental illness just seems to run in my family. If you categorize all of those things as mental illness, that's we all have that. So um, it's very difficult for each of us, and we each deal with it in completely different ways. Um, but the the quote is the quote from this elder from conference. I'm not going to try to say his name again. Um, was says challenges often indicate a need for additional tools and support and are not a character defect. Um, and the way I interpreted that was having mental illness is not a character defect. Having depression is not a character defect. Um, my struggles, challenges, so to speak, um, are not character defects. There's nothing wrong with me because I struggle with everyday things that seem simple. And honestly, there are days when I am super happy and everything is okay and all of those simple things just happen and they fall into place and I'm like, life is wonderful. And I can have several days like that and then all of a sudden I have a bad day for some unknown reason and it's like everything that I'm doing, everything that I've done just seems to fall apart and I'm back to square one and it really just sucks. But I'm really grateful that I read this talk, watched this talk, a conference on Saturday because it has been kind of a lifeline little thought for me this week. I did not think I was going to be crying. I am so sorry. You know me and emotions. I don't like sharing my emotions, but this is a hard thing for me. And I know this is a hard thing for other people too. So since last week and this week, I have been struggling with sleeping um, either too much or not enough. <laughs> it's really annoying. So I went, basically, I watched conference and then I went to work on Saturday and I literally had like three hours of sleep and I pretty much had a full 16 hour day and I kind of went home and crashed and I was like, yes, I can sleep. I slept for about three or four hours and I woke up with a migraine on Sunday and I was like, oh, you have got to be kidding me. <laughs> I did pretty much nothing. Um, I did attempt at some point to look at my phone or play games on my phone, but I turned the sound off because I can't handle the sound and sometimes the bright lights are really bad, so I can't really play very many games. I'm just bored because I can't sleep because my head hurts and I'm just, it's boring to just lay there and do nothing. <laughs> so occasionally I will try to turn on a movie or play something on my phone. Occasionally I can get away with that. Sometimes I cannot. Um, but I was happened to be on my phone when my friend called me, my sponsor called me and, um, it was nice to chat with her. We chatted for about an hour and then I was like, okay, I, I have to get off because my head is going to explode and I have to make myself eat food, even though I don't want to, because I've learned that if I drink water and eat food, it at least keeps me from getting to the point where I am dehydrated and throwing up and all kinds of disgusting things that migraines do, um, <laughs> to the point where I just can't. Like I'm so weak, I can't even move or I end up in the emergency room, which I can't afford to do. So um, 
I've had that happen a few times because I don't take care of myself when I have migraines. So this week was kind of my body telling me that I have to pay attention to it, even though I don't want to. Um, <laughs> and that talk kind of reminded me that I am one that I'm a full-time job. Taking care of myself is like a 24 seven effort. One that I fail at consistently. Um, <laughs> I continue to try. Don't get me wrong. I'm not giving up on myself. But I, I don't succeed or I, maybe I don't fail as much as I think I do. And at least I'm saying fail instead of epic fail like I used to. So I'm getting better. Um, but I think maybe I just have too high of expectations of what I need and what I want. or And I just wish that I would be different or wish that I would respond differently. And I am slowly learning to respond differently. And this week I did a little bit better of reminding myself that it's okay to relax. It's okay to take the time off of work even if I can't really afford it because... I have to take care of myself and my head. And I did get up on Monday. I couldn't sleep because my head was killing me. So I called my friend and I was like, she wanted me to take her to the bank. So I'm like, hey, I know I said I was going to come at 10, but can I come at nine because I'm up and I'm moving. And as long as I'm up and moving, I'm just going to do this. So I got something to eat. I took my friend to the bank and took her home. And then, um, and then what did I do? Oh, and then I went to work for a couple of hours because I thought as long as I'm out and about, even if my head is killing me, it lasted only about two or three hours. And then I was like, okay, I can't make myself work any longer. I thought about it. I tried, but I was like, no, this, this is not going to happen. So I came home and I crashed and I tried to sleep. I slept for a little bit, put some ice on my head. That helped. And then um, so I did some not so good things with my finances this week, but I'm not going to I'm not going to beat myself up over it because I just don't feel good. And when I don't feel good, I don't always make the best financial decisions. And I just did not feel like going to the store and I should have gone to the store because I had money to go grocery shopping. And instead of going grocery shopping, I spent my grocery money on ordering pizza, which is really bad for me <laughs> because I'm allergic to dairy. And then I eat stuff that has cheese and all the other stuff. And I wonder why I don't feel good. <laughs> but but it was so convenient. It was a matter of convenience and I just have not felt good this week with my head and the weather doing weird things and just not sleeping. It's just like, okay. So I didn't work very many days this week. Um, I took money out of my savings so I could uh, make a payment towards my rent to my landlord. And I was just grateful that I had the money in my savings to do that. Um, I did work yesterday, which was amazing. Um, and I, I had several people like, people reach out and text me or call me like every day this week, which is weird, but, um, it was nice that, you know, even if they were just, you know, my friend that called me Sunday cause she wanted to ride on Monday to the bank. I'm like, okay, but it was just, it was nice to, um, to go out. It was nice to be, to see people. It was nice to go to conference. It was, I loved that talk. And then another talk of that keeps coming to mind from conference. I had to look this one up cause it's a really old one. And I'm not quoting it. I'm just going to paraphrase that one. <laughs> you can watch it if you want. I'll put the link down below. Um, but it was from President Uchtdorf. He's Elder Uchtdorf now. I don't know if he was in the first presidency when he gave this talk or if it was Elder Uchtdorf or not. But it was October 2010. So like 11 years ago. And I still remember this talk. It's amazing. But um, he was talking about the things that matter most. But he starts the talk with the whole thing about trees and the rings in the trees and scientists can tell like certain rings, like when there's less like water or scarce years that the rings are smaller and closer together versus when there's plenty of water and the rings are like bigger and further apart. Um, and he talked about airplanes and turbulence and how you have to, when there's turbulence, it kind of makes you want to go faster to get through it, but you actually have to slow down in order not to have the plane fall apart. Um, and I'd forgot, but I listened to the talk before this, um, I did this video, so it was so it's all fresh in my brain, but I'd forgotten about the speed bump part. Like in cars, you don't speed over a speed bump. I mean, you can, you can make your car go flying. It's kind of fun. Not, not advisable. I remember my aunt did that when we were little, she had a Jeep. And so we went flying over speed bumps and ditches and stuff. It was awesome. But <laughs> my little car is, is too low to the ground and it just, I can hear it scrape when it does that, like the middle of my car. I'm like, yeah, it's not good for me to do that over speed bumps. Um, and my body is so old and out of shape with everything that I go over those and those big old bumps and it's like it jerks everything and I'm like, yeah, I can't handle that. 
anymore. <laughs> so not young, not as much fun as it used to be. So have to slow down to go over speed bumps, have to slow down in life. And so here I am in this place of my life where I am trying to set all of these goals, good goals to exercise, to drink more water, to eat healthier, to read my scriptures and meditationals, to work on myself in all six areas that I want to work on spiritually, emotionally, mentally, physically, socially, and financially. And I'm working on all of those areas. I'm aware of all of them, um, but it's not going as quickly as I want or the way that I want. And I think a lot of it is I focus too much, like I need to change my focus on what's going to make me healthy and happy in all of those areas. And not so much, you know, my grandiose lofty goals, um, because, <laughs> because when I'm dealing with um, depression and emotional traumas and lack of sleep, anxiety, I have way too much anxiety right now. I think my anxiety is going crazy because of all the things that are going on um, in my life, <laughs> which is awesome because I'm trying to make all of these changes. So I get anxious about making changes. I get anxious about um, the potential for my future and it kind of freaks me out. I overwhelm myself with things, not intentionally. I get excited. I'm like, hey, this is going to be so cool. And then I'm like, ah, and I freak out and my anxiety kicks in. Um, I'm also trying to involve myself in more things. So um, like I sent in a video and stuff for the Easter pageant. I won't know until December if I'm even going to be part of the Easter pageant or, or what that commitment's going to be. But my brain is freaking out about it. My nervous system is freaking out about it. Um, I'm helping doing the... Um, cleaning at the temple, which I did this week. It was nice. We actually had volunteers, got a little taste of what it's actually going to be like. Not as nerve wracking as I thought, but kind of exhausting, which is why I need to do more exercising during the week. So I have more energy to do that. So that it just, it stresses me out because of all the extra things that I'm trying to do. And they're all good things. They're all positive things. And I wish my body would stop being so anxious. I wish my nervous system would settle down. I wish that I would not stress out about the fact that something new and exciting is happening in my life. <laughs> and I don't know how to turn it off because I get excited and then I get anxious and then I can't sleep and then I am a zombie and then I don't want to do anything because I'm a zombie because I'm so tired so that I just lay on my couch or in my bed and nothing gets done and then in my head I beat myself up because of all the things all the negative talk because of all the things I should have done could have done should be doing and I have been trying really hard this week to be nice to myself, to be gentle with myself, to be like, okay, it's okay. We're just going to take another day off of work. We just need to rest. It's okay. It's going to be all right. We'll get some sleep. We'll go to work. It'll be fine. <laughs> and it's not necessarily going to work the way that I want it to. And now I'm thinking, okay, maybe I just need to start doing stuff in between. If I wake up and I can't seem to let myself go back to sleep, I can do something productive. I sort of tried that today. It sort of works. I got up and um, I couldn't go back to sleep. I was playing games on my phone. I'm like, this is not productive. This is not helping me. And then I finally decided I'd read my scriptures and meditationals and pray to see how God sees me and did a little bit of that writing. And then I was like, okay. And I got something to eat. And then I was like, okay, I can go back to sleep now. So I was awake for about three hours. I slept for about four. I was awake for about three. And then I slept for another three or four hours. And now I'm awake again. So it's not quite a full night's sleep. It's not quite you know, eight hours straight together, but it's something, <laughs> it's something and I'm going to take it. Um, and I'm trying, I'm trying to do my videos today because it is week 12 and I just want to report on how I'm doing and wishing I was doing differently, but trying to remember that the whole goal is to be happier, to be happier with myself, to be healthier. And some weeks, you know, require more attention, um, more time, um, and I have to step back and I can't do as much like exercising as I would like to. I could probably still drink more water. I just haven't focused on that as much, but I have focused on being nicer to myself and being okay with the fact that I'm like, okay, I spent grocery money to buy food. Granted, it only lasted me for like a day, but you know, that was better than, cause I didn't want to go to the store, but at least I wasn't spending my savings on things and I had money that I could savings I could do, put towards rent so that my landlord's not you know going without pay <laughs> so bills are still getting taken care of um so things are okay 
just not necessarily the way that I would want them to be. Ideally, I would have gone to work every day this week. My bills would be paid. I would have groceries, food in my fridge, which I don't. Um, and I would not be um, spending my money at the gas station and fast food or ordering pizza. But I think it's okay to splurge every once in a while. It's okay to do something a little extra nice. It's okay to it's okay to do those things. And it was kind of nice to remind myself that it's okay. And that I don't do those things for myself very often at all. Um, I don't, <laughs> I always look at them as like frivolous things or I'm like, when I went to order the pizza, I'm like, I'm being bad. And I was like, I'm not being bad. There's nothing bad or wrong about ordering pizza, except that my tummy's not going to like it because I, it has cheese on it. And there's probably, they probably used milk to make the dough for the crust. So it's, you know, my body doesn't like it. So it's not a very healthy choice, but it's not a bad choice. I'm not a horrible person for doing it. So I had to mentally remind myself that it was okay. And yes, I could have made better choices, but that would have, you know, but those are choices are harder to make when I not sleeping because I don't think clearly when I'm not sleeping. And so I have to be kinder to myself. I have to be gentler to myself. I have to accept that this is sometimes part of my reality. Um, but that God still loves me, that I can still love me, that I am still lovable, that I can still continue to improve. And if nothing else, I can respond to myself in a better, nicer way, um, which is a really good thing. And I'm really grateful for that. And I'm really grateful for that conference talk that just reminded me that just because my mental illness isn't visible to the world doesn't mean that it's not there, that it's real, it's a struggle, and that it does require additional tools and support. And I have the additional tools and support, I just need to remember to use them, <laughs> which sometimes in the middle of everything acting up, it's hard to do. But people have still reached out and been kind and helped me, even though they didn't even know I needed it, which has just been amazing and a reminder that God loves me. And I have been able to be a little bit nicer to myself, and be like, okay, it's okay. Maybe it's not ideal. Maybe it's not where I want to be or how, how I want things to work in my life, but this is what I have to work with. This is who I am. This is what I have to deal with. So if I'm going to be happy with myself, I have to accept that this is what I have and I can be happy with it. I can be nice to myself about it and I can continue to try to work and try to improve because I want to, to work and improve and I want to get to where maybe these days aren't as many where I'm not as anxious and overwhelmed and um, all of those things because I just, I get excited about all the changes I want to make in my life. And then I think my body just freaks out <laughs> because I'm trying to make changes. So it's this ongoing struggle that I have between my desire to change and my body not wanting to <laughs> or freaking out because change is different and it's hard. Um, and I know it's doable. I've done it before, I can do it again, and I know with God's help it'll happen. It's just going to take time, and it's going to take a lot longer than I want it to, but maybe that's why I'm giving myself 100 weeks to do this, and maybe that's why I still have 88 weeks to go, and maybe I'm just having to change my focus, my perspective as to what's going to make me happy, because if I'm happy, I make healthier choices. Um, and at this point, if I could just not beat myself up or say nice things, or at least when I tell myself I'm being bad for making a choice, I'm like, it's not bad. Maybe it's not the best choice in the world, but it's not the worst choice either. And it's okay. It's an okay choice. And I can do this. And it's not going to hurt too bad. <laughs> and it'll be okay, because at least I will have food and I will survive. So, um, and I survived this week. And this was a survival week. And next week may be a survival week too. I have no idea. But um, I am grateful for the little things that I have been able to do, for the little spiritual reminders that I am okay, that if this is not a character defect that I have, um, and that I cannot change it, I cannot get rid of it. It is not something that can be fixed. It is something that I have to live with. It is something that I have to learn to work around and to deal with. And sometimes it gets the better of me. And this week it got the better of me. <laughs> and I feel like it did last week too. So I hope that every week it's not like this. But um, if it is, I hope that you're patient and understanding. And maybe you have some suggestions or advice as to other things that I could do. Um, I'm all ears. 
or anything like that. Um, and if nothing else, maybe it helps you get, have a little bit of hope or know that you're not alone in your struggles with whatever it is that you're going through. And that change takes time and there's always setbacks. <laughs> oh, one of these days I will get through this and um, I will be different when I come out on the other side. I'm not sure how different. I'm not sure what direction my life is going to go at this point. I know which direction I want it to go and how I want things to work out. I have it all planned out in my brain, but I think God has a completely different plan. And so things just keep happening to help me to change my focus and my direction to align it with God's will and whatever direction he wants my life to go. And I know that it will be better than anything that I have planned or that I can imagine and that I will be much happier following his plan than mine but it doesn't mean that I am not ready to let go of mine <laughs> because I'm very stubborn and I like to hold on to things so um hence the struggle I am not very good at just surrendering and letting go so maybe I need to learn to just surrender to my lack of sleep surrender to my issues surrender to all of that and just let it go and not try to control it because I can't actually control it I still try <laughs> Clearly, it has gotten the better of me. So, um, but I can still smile, which I am grateful for. I can still find positive things to say to myself this week, which I am extremely grateful for. And I did get that extra spiritual boost watching a couple sessions of conference on Saturday. I wished I'd watched the rest of conference, but the migraine just put an end to that. So <laughs> maybe I'll watch some more next week. Um, time will tell. We shall see. But I am grateful for what I did get to see, and I am grateful that I can still do my video this week. So yay, and thank you for anyone that's willing to put up with me and to watch my videos. Um, if you like them or you can relate to them in any way, shape, or form, you can hit like, subscribe, share with someone else if you think they'll like it too. And I hope you have a great week full of gratitude and find some ways to have a healthier, happier life too.